Yeah. This is it, Luigi. This is it. There's 65, I think, left. We're on part five of this. There's way too many submissions. So let's let's get through this together. We will thrive. We will survive. No. 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 Why is the random never actually work? Okay. All right. Now I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm not waiting anymore. We're starting right now. Let's go. At least I can still hold things. But my hands have been in better shape. Holding a controller is not very fun right now. That's for sure. All right. Let's do this. My favorite character mostly tries to avoid them, if at all possible. Less so out of fear. More so do just how secretive they they is and the nature of what they hide. They probably wouldn't like each other even without that anyways. All right. Favorite character mostly tries to avoid them, if at all possible. Less so out of fear and more so due to just how secretive they are and the nature of what they hide. Probably wouldn't like each other even without that anyways. This, I mean, there's a number of characters. There's a number of characters here this could be. The nature of what they hide. That's, that's, what is it they hide? What are they hiding? Well, my money is on... My money is on Yukari Satori. We're gonna go with that one. It could be Kaneko, but if, if, you know, if, if this, if this whole thing... Ah, it was Yukari Satori, nice. I was like, it could be Kaneko, because Kaneko wants to, you know, she's like that too, but... Yukari is definitely a character who wouldn't want to interact with Satori at all for that that reason. Like, that's definitely a big reason why. And I was thinking, between Kaneko and Yukari, they both make sense, but you gotta think about it like this. Who likes Kaneko? And then when I thought of it like that, it became so much easier to, to guess. <laughs> Alright. By the way, chat, somebody has been, uh... Somebody has been recording all the answers, and they've been, they, they attributed, like, point goals to them, or point totals, kind of like the popularity poll. So they were doing it, like, two points for first place, one point for second place, to kind of gauge it. That was really cool. Uh, yeah, that's you, that's right there. That's Ben, he was doing it. Uh, that got caught by the spam filter. <laughs> Uh, so thankfully it was only that. No, no I, I see when when comments when comments get caught by the spam filter, I can choose to be like, yeah, they're fine, and that's all well and good. But sometimes YouTube doesn't actually put them in the spam folder; it just straight up deletes them. So this one was put in the spam folder. So all I, all I have to do is click a button, and it's like, yeah, it's okay. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not spam, and it's it goes on to the bot. But sometimes YouTube's just like, no. No, not having that. All right, here we go. If both characters were to travel together by vehicle, with my favorite character being their passenger, they would be able to figure out the exact length of the trip as long as the other didn't cheat. If both were to travel together by vehicle, with my favorite character being their passenger, they would be able to figure out the exact length of the trip. Is this uh, Ron and Komachi? Oh. Ron and Komachi. That's my, uh, that's my guess. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Ron is, uh, Ron is a mathematician. She's calculated the length of the Sanzu before, and Komachi's ability is to manipulate distance. So cheating would be the fact that, like, if she cheated the, dry, uh, the ride, then the distance would shorten than what it actually is. A Ron can calculate the distance if it was un, uh, unaltered like that. Yeah, that's a neat one. I like the way that one was written. 
And I was ready for it. I had that one. Alright. Next one. Next one. Alright. My favorite would chat joyfully with my shy second favorite. Wow, as, the bra as brain dead as she is, unknowingly spreading unwanted disease to the surrounding. Fortunately, it doesn't affect my second favorite, nor the red moon shape that suits her. Under the reflect of the moon, she would joke with a melancholic tone that music cannot be destroyed by sheer heat. I... I... I don't know how to read this. You know the best part about this theme is it starts off like a shit post, and then it's like actually a good mix of Necrophantasia. Thank you, Life, for the gift sub. Like, this is the start of the theme. And it's like, alright, you're, you're pulling my leg, but then it's like... Where is it? Then it gets to this part, and you're like, oh wait, that's actually really good. It's kind of funny how that works. Anyway. Joyfully, with my second favorite, as brain dead as she is, unknowingly spreading unwanted disease to the surrounding. Fortunately, it doesn't affect my second favorite, nor the red moon shape that suits her. What the hell does that mean? The red moon shape that suits her. <laughs> Under the reflect of the moon, she would joke with a melancholic tone that music cannot be destroyed by sheer heat. What? The, what? <laughs> what? 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 There's like five characters mentioned in this. <laughs> I, I... I... I have no idea, chat. I have no idea. Let, let's, let's go with, uh... Let's let's go with Remy and medicine. Just Remy and medicine. What is? I have no idea how to read this at all. Utsuho and Lunasa. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh man! I. All right, all right. You know that. You know all that. That was just. Look, I just got language barrier. That's all it was. That was just language barrier. That's all. Sorry for bad England. I I could not figure out. Like I couldn't figure that out at all. I had no idea how to read this. Like even slightly. <laughs> all right. Next. My favorite character is a master of CQC, however, so is my second favorite character. My second character prefers to use weapons, however. My favorite character may have an interest in learning those techniques with my second favorite character, provided the weapons are of high quality and intricately designed. Besides that, though, they would probably spar with each other, seeing as it's good for them in their training, and their masters would approve of it. Is this Yomu and Sakuya again? I feel like I've had this one before, but like, worded differently. Do you think maybe Raisin's good at CQC? Jun and Mayumi. What? Who the fuck is Jun's master? What? CQC is close quarter combat. Yeah. <laughs> Biakuden? How the hell is Biakuden Jun's master? What? Fucking what? <laughs> Whatever. Ah. Uh. 
next one. After the STM explodes, so go to Ante and ask for an item. The second two who will give her one and then try to leave. The first two who rickrolls her for the funny. And the second two who will shoot suppository shaped bullets at her before running away. Pardon? Who, who's submitting this? Who is doing this? There's no thoughts. There's no thought to have here. What? Uh. Can we go back to the Ron and Komachi submission? I like that one. Just... Just... <sighs> Flan and racing. just give me the answer so we can move on, please. Just give me the answer. Koishi and Raisin. Honestly, she would think she's a weirdo like everyone they met before. What's the difference between an evil spirit magician without any legs and a weirdly dressed girl throwing blades, after all? Also, considering the likely context of where they would meet the other characters, she'd be weirded out by the demons around and the freaky glass structures. Uh, that's Mima and Sakuya, right? Mima's probably correct, but weirdly dressed throwing blades sounds like Sakuya. Kana and Yumeko. She has no legs. Chat. Hmm. Magician, huh?
These submissions are like a parabola right now. The first ones, they went up. Now we're going down. So I'm hoping now we're gonna start going back up. My second favorite character will most likely try to adopt my favorite character and try to force her disciples to get to like her. Seeing all the amount of new people she has around her, my favorite character will take advantage of this and begin to mess with everyone by exposing their daily plans, all for her personal enjoyment. It will be treated as a fun joke and will be defended by my second favorite character. That is until she gets exposed for pushing your chores onto her followers. That's Dora, me, and Biakuden, right? Satori and Biakuden. Yeah, I guess she would. The, uh... What do you call it? No, uh... The reason I said Dorami is because... Dorami's, uh... Dorami knows the dream versions of characters, which is essentially... It's, it's kind of similar to, uh... Satori's ability to read one's heart. Because Dorami can see what's, uh, Dorami can see the same things in a different way. So yeah, this is actually something from 15.5 where Dream Biakuden's like... Uh, Dream Biakuden's like, sometimes I just don't want to do my chores, so I push it onto my followers as, and, and write it off as Buddhist training. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. But well, Satori works here, but Dorami was my first thought for sure on that. I guess forcing them to get to like her, that doesn't sound like Dora. I mean, that definitely sounds more like Satori, because Satori is not a very, uh, you know. You know. Alright. My favorite character would probably be intimidated by them since she usually doesn't interact with others much. She would probably want to keep away from them as she gathers something that could potentially cause serious trouble if consumed by them. She would probably want to keep away from them as she gathers something that could potentially cause serious trouble if consumed by them. Consume. Suck. potentially cause serious trouble if consumed by them. Something that she's gathering that would cause... Hmm... 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 I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking. Give me a second. I'm thinking. Alright, here's my guess. Yomo Yuma. Oh. Hina and Yuma, damn it. See. Alright. 
Hina was definitely the better choice to make there. But my mind, my mind was like, who gathers? Uh, Yomu gathered spring once, and I thought, what would happen if, what would happen if Hina or Yomu gathered spring and then Yuma ate it? Yuma would then turn into Yuma White. <laughs> if she consumed spring, it would be serious trouble for everyone involved. <laughs> Because I knew it wasn't Yiko. Because, like, if Yiko consumes something, she's already dead. Doesn't matter. So I figured it was Yuma. But I couldn't shake, uh... I couldn't shake Yomu from my mind at all. But Hina makes sense. She gathers misfortune. And if Yuma went and swallowed it all, that'd be pretty bad. Alright. All right. My favorite character would avoid and hate interacting with them, mainly due to their ability to spread information fast and wide, potentially just proving the myths my favorite character makes up. But actually, they would most probably just spread misinformation as well. Um, is that Aya and Nue? Or well, Nue and Aya. Nue and Aya. Yeah, Nue and Aya. Wow, that's really funny, dude. Really funny. Wanna see something even funnier? That's funny. If that's the only thing you can think of when you hear that character's name, seek help. Alright. No, you remember the- there was a chapter in Wildhorn Hermit? There's a chapter in Wildhorn Hermit, I think it was. Uh, it was the story of the Bowl Man. But Nue was spreading, Nue was spreading, uh, urban legends around. <laughs> she was spreading urban legends around. It was like one of the few times she showed up after, uh, TD. And yeah, I is, uh, I is a bit of a giveaway, of course. But Nue is a little more specific. Alright. Alright, favorite character would see second favorite character at a shrine party and will start politely making small talk with them. Soon the conversation devolves into favorite character, talking in depth about their own interests. Second favorite character stop listening, just like first favorite streamer right here, stop paying attention. Soon the conversation devolves into favorite character talking in depth about their own interests. Second favorite stopped listening a while ago, but is still sitting there with an innocent smile plastered on their face be nice. However, as soon as Favor says anything about their job, second Favor is reeled right back into the conversation. Now they are politely bickering who is better at their similar duties. They challenge each other to a Don Maku battle, but they are evenly matched and are stuck at a draw. The battle is cut short by Favor being dragged back home. Shit. Hmm. So they would have small talk, the conversation devolves into favorite character talking in depth about their own interests. Second favorite stop listening a while and starts to send anything to their job, the real back. To... Oh, this is fucking Sanai and Reimu, isn't it? <laughs> this is Sanai and Reimu. That's my guess. It's mailing and on. Fucking what? <laughs> Talk in depth about their own interests. Who mailing? Second favorite stopped listening a while ago, but is still sitting there with an innocent smile plastered on their face to be nice. As soon as anything about their job, second is real right back in that they're politely bickering who is better at their similar duties. They challenge each other to a Don Maku battle, but they're evenly matched and are stuck at a draw. How? <laughs> How are they? How are they evenly matched? The battle is cut short by favorite being dragged back home. <laughs> Malin can't beat her. Okay. Alright. No, I can see- I can see how this one makes sense, but... 
There was definitely a lot of wiggle room and interpretation. I thought it was Reimu and Sanai. <laughs> My favorite character would probably enjoy drinking and eating with her, though I believe my favorite could eat more than my second favorite, and I doubt she could withstand any physical blows from her. But, holy spacing. Given their personalities, they definitely withstand, they definitely get along, although I doubt my favorite friend would enjoy cleaning up their mess. Hold on. My favorite character would probably enjoy drinking and eating with her, though I believe my favorite could eat more than my second favorite, and I doubt she could withstand any physical blows from her. But given their personalities, they definitely get along, although I doubt my favorite's friend would enjoy the cleanup from their mess. Uh... I feel like I don't have enough information aside from physical blows. I doubt she could withstand any physical blows from her. This leads me to believe it's not Yiko because Yiko's a ghost. You eat more than my second favorite. She could withstand any physical blows. But given the personalities, they definitely get along. Although I doubt my favorite's friend would enjoy the cleanup from their mess. Um, um, see, I, I don't think it's Yiko, but at the same time, I don't know who whose favorite's friend. I doubt my favorite's friend would enjoy having uh, the cleanup for the mess. I don't... I don't think this is right, but I, I, I'm drawing a blank. Let's just go with, uh... I don't know. Let's just go with Yiko and, uh, Suika. Because it doesn't specify drinking, it only specifies eating. I don't think that's right, but I honestly don't know, so I'm just, we're just gonna, it was, it was Yiko and Yugi, so it was Yiko. Alright. See, physical blows, could only think of, like, Suika or Yugi. With their personalities, they would definitely get along, would they? My favorite's friend. Is Yomo Yuko's friend? Are they friends? I don't think friend is the right word to describe those two. <laughs> but what do I know, right? What do I know? Alright. Alright, next one. Given a rainy day, my second favorite character would probably approach my favorite character, waiting under a building, and offer to walk with my favorite character, sharing an umbrella. My favorite character would probably reject it though, proudly proclaiming how she's actually the reason it's raining, to which my second favorite character would thank my favorite character, as rainy days are her favorite days. Oh god, who's the character that summons rain? She's actually the reason it's raining, to which my second favorite character would thank my favorite character. Proudly proclaiming how she is actually the reason it's raining. I don't recall... 
Wait, 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 wait. There is a character who can do that. Uh, is this Sanai and Kogasa? Sanai and Kogasa? Sanai can make miracles. It's Tenshi and Kogasa. <laughs> Damn it. Tenshi wasn't my first thought, but she could also cause rain, huh? Sanai's miracle abilities don't, like, work instantly. They take preparation. Her miracles are miracles, but they're not, like, insane, I suppose. But I'm pretty sure she can make it rain. You know, like, raindrops, not, not like Jun. You know, that's a different kind of making it rain. Alright. Next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. My first character gives good advices to the other character about great methods to get more alcohol. With easy business strategies, obviously. But after a while, the first character discovers she lost her precious time, all because the second character never stops drinking. Thanks to the help of a magic box that she stole from a friend. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh. This is, uh, we got another England message here. Good advices to the other character about great methods to get more alcohol, with easy business strategies, obviously. But after a while, the first character discovers she lost her precious time. What does that mean? She lost her precious time. All because the second character never stopped drinking. Thanks. To the- of the help of a magic box that she stole from a friend. What the, f the- Uh, I'm- You got me, man. You got me. I don't know the answer. I don't know! Good advices! Chat, can you give me good advices? I need- I need good advices. <laughs> uh, what is this about losing precious time? You know what? I'm going with Sakuya and Suika. Uh, I'm going with I'm going with Sakuya and Suika. Tsukasa and Suika. Okay, I knew Suika was right, but Tsukasa? Yeah, that makes sense, but losing precious time, what does that mean? She lost her precious time. All because the second character never stopped drinking. Is that why? Well, the whole- yeah, the, the magic box that she stole from a friend is, is Suika, because the magic box that, uh... Well... The- she didn't steal the gourd, but there is a box. It's Kasen's box. The Ibaraki box that when you drink it, it has, like, healing- well, I mean, it's also- Wait! Is that actually supposed to be Kasen's box? Or are we- is this just the wrong English word here? <laughs> Is, is this actually supposed to be Kasen's item? Is this supposed to be Yugi's item? Is this referring to Suika's item? I have no idea! I don't know! I have no fucking idea. I have no idea. Alright. My favorite character would probably take pictures of my second favorite character while she is asleep. That... That could be anything. Just give me the next one, Mina. I'm not doing that next one. Just give me the next one. Should've just deleted that one. Favorite character would probably take pictures of my second favorite character while she is asleep. I am Omiji. Because I has a camera.
I unmailing. Oh, you know that. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. I may, I may have just exposed myself. I think I accidentally just exposed myself with my answer. Mailing makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Whoopsie Daisy. You know, my first thought actually wasn't Aya. Chat, my first. The first thing that came to mind for me was Ron and Chen. That, that was the. That was the first thing. That was the first thing. No, we don't need to tell people what I skipped. The whole, it's the whole reason of skipping them. They absolutely would tease the second character with a sarcastic demeanor. Well, that's a lot. Oh, Jazzy. They absolutely would tease the second character with a sarcastic demeanor. What the f what? There's no information. There's, There's no information. You know what? We're skipping that one too. We're skipping that one too. Just give me the answer, I don't care, but I'm not putting that one on the sheet. There's fucking nothing there. Hello? There's literally no info there. How am I supposed to guess off of that? Watch, the answer's gonna be something completely ridiculous. Yuka... Yuka and Hina. Bruh! Who... What? <laughs> what? Literally what? Holy shit. I can see my second- my two favorite characters working together to keep harmony in Gensokyo. However, the second would definitely complain that the first motives are rather selfish. I don't know much about Toro lore, especially from fighting games or written works. Uh... Well, wouldn't this just be Yukari and Reimu? So, because uh, I assume Yukari and Reimu, like, oh, I guess they've actually done this, right? Hmm. Yukari's motives are a bit interesting. Biakuten and Kusen. The second would definitely complain that the first motives are rather selfish. Are Byakuden's motives for preserving Gensokyo selfish? I don't really think so. I wouldn't say so. She likes she likes Gensokyo as it is because there's more, there's, you know, there's a, it's, it's less like what it was when she was sealed away. I wouldn't. I mean, maybe you could call it selfish because she wouldn't want her place. Uh, she wouldn't want a place that's so like accepting of her to disappear. But in that case, everything is selfish, right? Hmm. Meow. The fear that humans feel towards yokai is the same energy that powers her magic. Which, when you think about it, her ultimate goal of, you know, coexistence would mean... If, if, if Byakuren achieved her, uh, her goal of, of coexistence, then yokai and humans would no longer fear each other, which means A, yokai would no longer exist, and then Byakuren's power source would dry up as well. But we don't really like to think about that. We don't like to think about the fact that Byakuren's whole uh, entire worldview completely contradicts uh, Gensokyo as a whole, and no one seems to... no one seems to really mind within it either. It's just, it's just how it is, I guess. This is how it is. Alright. My favorite character was asked to watch my second favorite for an afternoon. Uh, my favorite some, spend some time throwing shade, but afterwards the two work together to craft something out of this world.
My favorite character was asked to watch my second favorite character for an afternoon. My favorite spent some time throwing shade, but afterward the two worked together to craft something out of this world. Huh. To craft something out of this world. Well, that's... That's where you gotta use the mind. Alright, chat, I'm guessing... I'm guessing Raisin and Clown Piece. That's... That's my guess. We got Moon, we got Hell. And Clown Piece is the kind of character that I could, I could see Raymu asking somebody to babysit. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm just guessing. Kogasa and Utsu. Kogasa's a babysitter. And then they would actually, like, craft something because Kogasa... Because Kogasa's a blacksmith and Utsuho is... What is Utsuho if not a portable fucking furnace? God damn it! <laughs> oh, god damn it. Okay. I thought Aisen and Clown Piece because they're from different... They're not from Gensokyo and then... You know, Clown Piece... I don't know. I don't know, man. Out of this world. All right. Wow, it just loops like that, huh? Okay. Oh. Nope. Nope. That's fine. Unlocated hell is good. Alright. My favorite may have met the second during her work towards her master's plan. Perhaps the second may have recognized her favorite's work towards prolonging her season. Setting the favorite apart from other humans she may have met. Whoops. I didn't read that one right. The favorite may have met the second during her work towards her master's plan. Perhaps the second may have recognized the favorite's work towards prolonging her season. Setting their favorite apart from other humans she may have met. Prolonging her season. Her master's plan. This is Yomu and Lily White! <laughs> Yomu and Lily White. Wait. Prolonging? Oh, wait. I pro that's not what prolonging means. Whoops. It's not Lily. It's not Lily, but I've already locked in. Yeah, it was Yomu and Letty. Fuck! Sorry for my bad England! No, I, pr that, I... Prolonging does not mean what I thought it meant there. Like, I blanked it, and as soon as I locked in, I was like, wait, that's not what that word means. <laughs> the word I was thinking was delaying. Delaying was the word that I, I read prolonging as, essentially. So it was Yomu, but it wasn't Lily, it was Letty. Close enough. Close enough, really. <laughs> okay. My England's bad. <laughs> Everyone's England is bad. Alright. If they both meet again, they might bicker back and forth about work or life and death. But maybe this time one of them could be annoyed and be harsh while the other gets longer speeches. If they both meet again, they might bicker back and forth about work or life and death. But maybe this time one of them could be annoyed and be harsh while the other gets longer speeches. I'm gonna go with Yuko and Aiki. Because I'm pretty sure Aiki has met Yuko before. But not necessarily in canon. So much as uh, met when she, you know. Because Yuko, when she died, was instated as like the governor of uh, the netherworld, right? So she had to have met Aiki at that point in time. They know each other. Or at least they know of each other. But longer speeches and life and death talk, it's, that sounds right. So I'm going to go with that. My hand. My hand. <gasps> uh, I need my answer. 
can't move on without my answer. Sakuya and Aki. I don't remember the conversations that characters have in POFB. Although I do remember Sakuya's general idea with Aki. But I guess there was more I missed. And here I thought I was being clever with Yiko. But Sakuya and Aki have met from POFB. Aki feels like an easy character to write. <laughs> so I, I like make an example for because it's always just results in that her like lecturing someone. Alright. Alright. During a trip near the lake, my favorite character stumbled upon this peculiar figure. Fishing with a rather unusual item. Having originally came to this lake to get some ingredients to cook, she decides to make some small talk with the stranger and offers them food later. Although she'd have to serve it in portions she isn't often used to. Fishing with a rather unusual item. Serve it in portions she isn't often used to. Who wouldn't be used to it? The person making the food or the person eating the food? Huh. Serve it in portions she isn't used to. I'm not really sure. A peculiar figure fishing with a rather unusual item. I don't know what this means. Who's fishing near the lake with an unusual item? Portion she isn't often used to. Well, I have no idea. I don't know. Alright, let's... I wanted the answer to this one. Let's go with uh, Misty and Chirbo. Let's go with Misty and Chirbo. Misty and Shimmy. Ah. Oh, she's. Is she. Is she doing, uh. Is she doing harpoon. Is she harpooning with her fucking needle? Okay, she has to serve it in portions she isn't often used to. So, yeah, she'd have to make ant food. <laughs> okay. Alright. See, I was thinking. I was thinking Shimmy, but I, like. I wasn't sure. I just wasn't sure. I just imagine- I'm just imagining Shimmy trying to harpoon a, a fish with her fucking knitting needle. And it just doesn't work because the knitting needle is like, you know, it's, it's a knitting needle. It's not a harpoon. <laughs> it's- I think, uh, Shimmy's gonna be in DLC 4 for Mystia, so... But I think she's like... I think her size has been scaled up because of the mallet, so she's not gonna be itty bitty. Unless she is itty bitty, in which case... That, that'll be- that'll be neat to see. She's probably gonna be loaded in cash. She's a princess after all, I think. <laughs> I, I actually, I'm not sure who's a princess and who just calls themselves a princess anymore. Kagui is a princess, but is Shimmy a princess? Is Wagasaki Hime a princess? I guess her name is fucking Hime, so her, she, she is technically a princess, no matter how you want to slice it. <laughs> but I don't know, I don't know. All right, Redacted One would probably want to show what flowers can be found beneath the surface. Redacted Two would oblige with a showcase of her subterranean rose spell card to a playful yet lethal degree, which would prompt a playful yet aggressive response from Redacted One. Yuka and Koishi. Yuka would be interested in flowers, and subterranean rose is a very well-known Koishi card. Yep, Yuka Koishi. I like when they reference, like, the spell cards. 
Spell cards are actually like a part of Toho that I'm pretty hazy on when it comes to spell cards that have n names that I don't like I can't read like like Ron spell cards for example I don't really remember what most of the names of those ones are because they like they involve they involve like a Japanese name or a Japanese term or something and I just can't remember it but you know some spell card names are super simple like Starbow Break Subterranean Rose Rorschach and Donmaku like, I, I, uh, I, I know some of them. I know some of them off the top of my head, but there's definitely a couple that I'm just like, what is that even, like, what is that? I don't know the full name of, like, any of Yomu's spell cards. I just know, hung, uh, Hungry God Sword, uh, or Human God Sword, I think it was. Uh, Hungry, Hungry God Sword. I see, I don't fucking remember. 200 Yojana and one slash. I remember that one because it's got a weird name. Alright, uh. Next one. HGS, HKS, Hell God Sword, Heaven God Sword, Human God Sword. God damn it, Sword. Hmm. My favorite character would be slightly intrigued by them, having not seen many of her kind of yokai before. Despite having never met them, my first fave is fairly familiar with a few of the second favorite's friends, having met them during banquets. Hmm. My favorite character would be slightly intrigued by them, having not seen many of her kind of yokai before. Despite having never met them, she... Is fairly familiar with a few of, uh, of her friends, having met them during banquets. Hmm. Not many of her kind of yokai before. So a rare type of yokai? Honestly, that doesn't narrow it down for me at all. Uh, <clears throat> slightly interested. Slightly interested due to not having seen that kind of yokai before. But only slightly. Despite having never met them, she's familiar with the, some of their friends, having met them during banquets. All right, so I remember in an earlier stream we established how many characters in the series actually have friends. <laughs> so my money chat, I think this I'm gonna go with Kozusu and Sika. Wait, no, not seen many of her kind of yokai before. Which would imply she's seen at least one before. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, whatever. Yomu and Raiko. Sukumogamis. Uh, first has met some of second favorite's friends, having met them during banquets. Who's Raiko's friend? I guess Raiko's friends with the Prism Rivers, right? And I guess the uh, Sukumo sisters? She's got- she's pretty tight-knit with them. Hmm. Slightly intrigued, having not seen many before. Has Yomu- who has Yomu run into that's a Sakumogami? Yomu has met the Prism Rivers because Yiko employed them for the flower viewing. So she's obviously met those three, but they're poltergeists, not Sakumogami. They don't really count. Uh, she didn't meet Ben Ben or Yatsuhashi, because she's not in 14. She did meet Kogasa, because she's in 13. Uh, technically Mayumi is a Sukumogami, right? I think? She's an object given a soul in a different manner, but she is a Sukumogami. So that would mean that she's met two Sukumogami. Hmm, I'm really thinking about this now. What about medicine? Medicine's a Sukumogami, right? Does Yomu encounter medicine in her route and vice versa in Toho 9? Cause she counts. She's an object given life. I think most people when they hear Sukumogami they think of uh they think of Kogasa first and foremost. Hmm. 
no, they're Sukumogami. Because they're a Suku. Oh, well, actually, it's Kokoro as well. A Sukumogami is an object that gains sentience after a certain amount of time, or, you know, uh, holding on to a grudge. It's a type of yokai. Sukumogami is a type of yokai. So, medicine is a Sukumogami, and Mayumi is. That's, Mayumi's, like, inception is a bit strange. They have no story interaction, okay. Yeah, Mayumi's, like... I, I feel like Mayumi counts as a Sukumogami, but I've never really thought of her as one. Kogasa is a Sukumogami, yes, because she's an umbrella that uh, gained sentience through her grudge against uh, humans, but, like, throwing her away. It's the same deal with medicine. Medicine, medicine was given life by the poison... And, uh, and from a grudge that she harbored for the people who threw her away. You know what Bayonet is? The Pokemon? Like, Bayonet. Medicine and Bayonet are, like, the same. They're, like, the same thing. The same origin story. Also, if you've ever heard of Mary-san, that, like, that urban legend, aka Koishi's urban legend, that is also, you know, they're all the same, same thing. I don't know, you have to look it up. Cause like, I've never heard, I've never, uh... I've never heard of anyone say, like, really calling Mayumi a Sukumogami. I've never really thought of it. Quick, chat, what does, uh... <laughs> what is, what does Lotus Lambert classify them as? That'll be our ultimate decider. What are they classified in, in, uh, in Genso Wander? Check that. Figure that out, and then, then we'll know. Then we'll know for sure, of course. <laughs> but as far as I'm, I'm concerned, Sukumogami is we got Kokoro. Kokoro, Raiko, uh, Benben, Yatsuhashi, and Medicine are like the main ones. Or, yeah, are the, are the, main, the main six I would think of. Oh, Raiko as well. I, I missed her. Those are the main six I would think of. But if you said that you thought Mayumi was a Sukumogami, yeah, I would agree with that. But, like, I'm not gonna die on this hill. A stupid hill to die on. Hmm. See, Narumi's weird because if Narumi's a magician, but if you call Narumi a Sukumogami, then you'd have to call Aki a Sukumogami because both of them are for the same thing. Both of them are, are Jizo statues. But they didn't. They did How did they gain their sentience? I think that's an important part of it. Sukumogami are born from a grudge or like reaching a hundred years. Of, uh, of existence, they gain sentience. So if they're like, if they're filled with divine power, I don't think it really counts the same way. But at the same time, the miracle mallet was like exactly that for the, the others. So like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Quick, somebody Google the exact definition of a Sakumogami right now. Google it right now. See now, I can't tell anymore, chat. I can't, I can't tell anymore. <laughs> Cause I feel like we're not, I think, I feel like we're not wrong, but at the same time, we're not right either. You know? Like there's, there's a few characters in here that if you told me like, there's a Kumogami, I, I could be like, I don't think of them that way, but I guess, I guess they could be. A Sukumogami is a type of yokai produced from a tool or object inhabited by uh, one of the Yao Yozuru no Kami. In Japanese legend, all type of Sukumogamis gain life and sentience on the 100th anniversary of their creation and can range from harmless and friendly beings to horrifying vengeful spirits depending on how they were treated and used. Alright. Toa Wiki list itself is unsure if medicine is a Sukumogami. Well, she should be, right? Medicine should be a Sukumogami because she was an object that gained life and she's, you know, she's a, bench she's a horrifying vengeful spirit because of the way she was treated. By being abandoned. So she should count as a Sukumogami, right? Unless you argue that she was given life by the poison within her, so she didn't become a Sukumogami by reaching 100 years of life. In which case, I don't fucking know anymore, dude. I don't know. I have no idea. This is... This, this is the game we're playing right now. This is the game we're playing. Again, it sounds right, but it also you could argue that it's not right. But like, I'm not gonna fight you on this because this is a pointless hill to die on. But at the very least, chat, we can agree that Ben Ben, Yatsuhashi, Raiko, and Kokoro, and Kogasa are all Sukumogami. 
That is inarguable. That is inarguable. Those are all- those are Zakumogami. That's inarguable. But Medicine and Mayumi? Oh, but then you got Hina as well, right? Because Hina was a doll. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Whatever. Whatever. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm done splitting hairs, dude. I'm done splitting hairs. Any yokai based on an object can't just automatically be a Sakumogami. That just keeps adding to the fucking list. I can't do this right now. My favorite character likes jewelry and valuable stuff, and so does my second character. My second character acts calm and is quite rational in their group, and if they got the chance, they'd like to play a prank on my favorite character. I probably wouldn't take it very well. Hmm. Favorite character likes jewelry and valuable stuff. And so does my second favorite character. Second favorite character acts calm and is quite rational in either group. And if they got the chance, would like to play a prank on my favorite character. Who likes shiny things? Jonente. Jonente. Ha cha cha cha. Ha cha cha. Jonen Star Sapphire. <laughs> Yeah. Star Sapphire. She's shiny. Hmm. You know that reminds me of chat? Sometimes I get comments on videos that are like that they're the comments are like talking to the other commenters. So, the comments are like, does he know? And it's like... I, I'm, I'm sitting there reading the comment, like this commenter is like... Like I got a comment, uh, on... I think it was, I think it was the Hina video on the other channel, but it was like... Uh, does... Nope. No penis. I got a comment, it's like, does he know that it's not pronounced Jun? I'm just thinking to myself, shit, I don't know. <laughs> does he know? So sometimes I get comments like that that are like, this dude's trying to ask the other co the comment section if I if I if I know something, and I'm just reading it like, hmm, I don't know, maybe streamer doesn't know. Streamer has no idea. Streamer would never know. Does he know? Flandre March hard mode. My favorite has met them before. This is so good. <laughs> I got distracted. My favorite has met them before. She has good intentions, however, her given nature makes it difficult to interact with others. She offered to help with her struggles, she could really use it, but it's to no avail as she's steadfast in her mission. My favorite has met them before. She has good intentions, however, her given nature makes it difficult to interact with others. She offered to help with her struggles, she could really use it, but to no avail as she's steadfast in her mission. Help with their struggles. What's her mission? Hmm. Hmm. Steadfast in their mission. This is gonna be the reason I get this wrong. But I'm gonna go with Byakuden and Koishi. I'm gonna go with Byakuden and Koishi. Cause that sounds like that sounds like something they would interact like they've interacted with. It's Hina and Reimu. My favorite as she's good intentions of her given nature makes it difficult to interact with others, that's Hina. She offered to help Reimu with her struggles, she could really use it, but it's to no avail as she's steadfast in her mission. What does that mean exactly? What is Reimu's mission? And why... 
What is what is Rainbow being steadfast in her mission? Oh, is this com is this dialogue from Mountain of Faith? Is that what it is? Is that what this is? <clears throat> you know, try to help Rainbow making her back off the mountain. Okay, th yeah, that makes sense. But at the same time, this is written as she offered to help with their struggles. She could really use it. That doesn't sound like what Hina was trying to do in Mountain of Faith, though. She could really use- that sounds like helping get rid of Raymu's misfortune. I don't know, I get it. I get it to a certain extent, but I- I don't know, maybe- maybe I'm- maybe I'm misunderstanding something, though. Alright. Byaku and Koishi seem like a correct answer, but that last bit was definitely what was throwing me off from that, but I, I went with it because I couldn't think of anything else. They noticed how they both ran away from outside Gensokyo and now live their lives here. They ran away from outside Gensokyo. Uh, Racing and Sanai? Raisin and Sanai. Sanai and Raisin, yeah. Yeah, it didn't specify outside world, it said outside Gensokyo, so that meant that could mean the moon and stuff as well. Raisin abandoned the moon, uh, and Sanai... See, the whole... The thing about Sanai is you could, you could say that she ran away, but to be honest, there's not a lot of information surrounding Sanai's choice to follow Kanako and Suiko to Gensokyo. I guess you could call it running away, but I wouldn't consider it the same vein as Raisin. Raisin became, uh, Raisin in an act of cowardice abandoned the moon. But the reason Kaneko and Suiko left the outside world is because Kaneko didn't want to die, essentially. And, uh, Sanai ended up going along with them. There's not much information as to why, or why, or like, like, well, there's not a lot of information on that, in general. All we know that is Sanai, Sanai went with them. This is Dim Dream from, uh, Call 3. It's, it's Marissa's theme. It's one of, it's one of Marissa's, it might actually be Marissa's weirdest theme. Not counting Tall 9, because that theme sucks. But, I like this theme a lot. My favorite character will be burned to death by my second favorite character for being a bit too annoying. Wow, that narrows it down. That narrows it down. Burned to death by my second favorite character for being a bit too annoying. Th that just doesn't narrow it down at all, dude. Moko, Moko Kogasa. Moko Kogasa. Watch this one be Futo. It's always Futo when I don't say it's Futo. Seija and Moko. Yeah, you see, the first one, there was not enough information. <laughs> Moko is a safe pick, but the other one was a gamble. Alright. Alright. Alright, next one. My England! My bad England! My favorite character would offer to start a war on behalf of my second favorite character so that she could make a killing producing weapons, but my second favorite character would reject the offer because she would gladly just produce military hardware out of passion rather than profit. This is fine, as the offer was just a scam anyway. What the fuck? <laughs> what? I'm get Futo Nitori. Futo Nitori. Futo Nitori. Military hardware? That could also be Takane. Tay and Rika. <laughs> what the fuck? Why would Tay offer to start a war? What? Excuse me? Why would she do that? 
Rika makes military hardware. She built a tank, dude. That's all she built. I mean, I guess. But she built ghosts and a giant eyeball thing. I don't think... You know, I don't think military hardware is necessarily just like you know, her own... She just builds whatever the fuck she wants. Well, I think military. I think more of the Yamawaro. Because they do those, uh... You know, they play airsoft up there. Alright. Tay, dude. Tay would offer to start a war. <laughs> with who? With who? Who's she gonna do that with? My favorites would duel to determine the most terrifying yokai in all of Gensokyo. Yuka and Yukari. This was a popular dojin back in the day, it seems. It's just, what if these two fought? No holds barred. And it got, uh, yeah, you got some, you got some crazy action, uh, shorts from those two. Because they were, canonically, the strongest characters in the series for a long time. Until Hikati has showed up. And, uh, the Watatskis, I suppose. Next one. Hmm. I don't think Redacted is as open-minded as them, though I'd say that two of them share some sort of motherly trait. And they have up a lot of hard Don Mako... They have a lot of hard Don Mako up their sleeve to show off whenever they want to, so I suppose there's potential there. I don't think they're as redact, uh, they're as open-minded as them, though I'd say that the two of them share some sort of motherly trait. They also have a lot of hard Don- See, here's the funny part, chat. Here's the funny part. That says hard Don Maku. That is putting difficulty in here, and I guarantee, no matter who the fuck I say here, someone will think, Oh, they're not hard. <laughs> I think this is Junko and y Yuko, personally. I think this is Junko and Yuko. But somebody will be like, Hard Don Maku? Question mark? No matter what the answer is. So let's just... Junko and Byakuden. Okay, never mind. Both those fuckers have a no... Th those, both those fuckers have Hard Don Maku. Yeah, they do. I hate them. I hate them both. Byakuden's fight's hard. Junko's fight is hard, but it's hard for a different reason. Fucking sucks. I hate Junko. Junko is the worst boss fight ever. Actually, that's not true. The crazy backup dancers is the worst fight ever. But Junko, from a design point standpoint, in my opinion, is the worst fight in all of modern Toho. I got Junko right, though. Because our entire gimmick is just micros. Micro dodging. That's not fun. It only works with infinite continues. Legacy mode patterns with that shit, and then she put in the fucking extra stage. Fuck you, Junko. Fuck you. My favorite character almost got served nicely with Leak by them. Considering their abilities, if said action were to occur, it would probably be, uh. What the hell is that? Is that a food? Is that like steamed duck? Chat, what is that? Almost got served with a leak by them, considering their ability. Is it duck? I think it's duck. Hmm. They spelled leak like, like a leaky faucet. Yes, I know what leaks are. I'm asking what the hell a coniglio de forno is. <laughs> it's roasted rabbit. Oh, okay. Uh. Huh. Well, that's, that's Moko and Racing then, right? Well, I was just thinking of Farfetch'd. 
Grayson and Moko, yeah. They fought in uh they fought in the fighting games. Oh, that shouldn't is off center. Can't have that. Perfect! Jesus. Cho, your theme is six and a half minutes long. Good lord. a good theme, but it's been, it was still going. <laughs> Just had to let it go. They fought each other in Tall 8, Imperishable Night, Phantasmagoria, Fireview, and Scarlet Weather Rhapsody. And only those games, huh? So it's a character who was in 8, 9, and SWR, which means it wasn't a character who was in Immaterial Missing Power, which means the characters here that it could be is Raisin, Raisin's a character who's been in those all three of those games. And if Raisin's involved, that means... Okay, no, Raisin's definitely involved. But the problem is... Who did Raisin fight in all those games? I don't remember Raisin's story in, in Scarlet Weather Rhapsody or Phantasmagoria. But this could be Reimu, Marissa, Yomu, uh, Sakuya. It can't be Aya. It has to be a player character. It could be. Rem it can't be Romilia. It can't be Yuko. It can't be Yukari either. So it has to be one of the player characters. It has to be one of the player characters with Raisin. But I don't remember Raisin's story. So let's go with Sakuya. Let's go with Raisin and Sakuya. Oh. I did get to narrow it down at least. It's Raisin and Yomu. Okay. There you go. I couldn't. I couldn't narrow it down any further than that. But since it, since they didn't fight before. Uh, in in tall 7.5, it means it had to be a character from 8, and the only character from 8 who's a playable uh, playable that was a boss is Raisin, and the only characters who would fight against the boss in that game are the 8 player characters, of which Yukari, Alice, y Yiko, and Romilia are not playable in Toho 9, so it had to be Reimu, Marissa, Yomu, and uh, Sakuya. But I don't remember who uh, Raisin fought in Toho 9 or Toho 10.5, so I just kind of guessed on that one. So, that's the best I could do to narrow it down. If I had remembered... See, if you had, if you had all the information there to get it right, I narrowed it down really far, but there were, a couple, there were a couple pieces of information I needed more info on. But that was just, that's just my own personal, that's, that's just my own personal information not being up to, uh, up to the question, you know. I got a B minus on that. B minus streamer. That's all it is. <laughs> B minus streamer right there. I did, you know, I had the right formula, but I didn't have, I didn't do enough studying. Alright. Still multiple options anyway. Well, again, I don't remember the details, but I'm sure at least one of those characters will be taken out of it. If you ran it all, because it have it would have to be a character they fought in all three of them, right? So they'd have to have fought them in all three games. All right. My favorite character was doing her shrine maiden duties when suddenly a young-looking girl filled with unconsciousness came forward to the shrine and approached the shrine maiden to ask for divine blessings. That is Sanai and Ko uh, and Squishy. Yep, that is the that's that's like the almost in the plot of the extra stage in SA, where Koi, Squishy sees uh you know the power that Utsu got and then she heads off to the Moria Shrine to get get some of that for herself. All right, we're over an hour in the chat. How many we got left? My favorite character wouldn't care 
less about where my second favorite came from, but is intrigued by my second favorite's conflicted emotions. Meanwhile, my second favorite has decided if she should cut down the person in front of her because of what she is, ask her help to get back to her home, or try to go to Ante and leave her be. Hmm. 30 left? Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't care less about where they came from, but is intrigued by their conflicted emotions. Second favorite is deciding if she should cut down the person in front of her because of what she is. Ask her for help to get back to her home, or try to go to Ante and leave her be. Cut her down because of what she is. Or try to go to Ante and leave her be. Why are those her three options? That's the, that's the question here. Pretty sure the first character is Moko here. Favorite character's conflicted emotions. Cut them down. Ask for help to get back home. Or try to go to Ante. Cut her down? <laughs> I don't know. Let's go Moko Yomu. Moko Yomu. I don't think it's one of the Watatskis. Oh, it turns out it was. Kokoro and Yorihime. Any lost word players in chat? <laughs> Don't be shy. You know, just looking to hand out a ban or two. That's all. <laughs> Next one. My favorite character would probably consider my second favorite character to be doing a good job, despite my second favorite generally being hated by everyone. My second favorite would probably dislike that my favorite doesn't hate her. Uh... Doing a good job. Consider them to be doing a good job, despite my second favorite generally being hated by everyone. My second favorite would probably dislike that my favorite doesn't hate her. Uh, I'm gonna go with Biakuden and Seija, because Biakuden is the main character I think of when I think of the most, like, patient character in the entire series. Good job, I'm unsure about, though. I thought about Satori, but I feel like Satori wouldn't dislike someone for, because they didn't not like her. Aki and Seija. Why would Aki consider Seija to be doing a good job? <laughs> huh. I, I don't know. I guess she's an Amano Jaku, that's what they do, right? That's what she- that's what they do, but... I- I don't know if Aki's ever- well... I don't know if Aki's ever interacted with Seija outside of her scenes in ISC. And I don't remember what Seija's comments were on those at all. So... Wait, it was, uh, it was Aki Seija, so I was right at the second one. Okay. All right. Next one. Hmm. Normally it should not be possible for either of them to meet since the second is a reclusive and the first barely goes outside. But if they did meet, the second would find it very entertaining and the first would want the other's power. The second is reclusive and the first barely goes outside, but if they did meet the second would find it very entertaining and the first would want the other's power.
Uh, normally it should not be possible for either of them to meet. Hmm. Is there a difference here between being reclusive and one barely going outside? The second would find it entertaining and the first would want the other's power. I cannot narrow it down. Chat. I don't know. I got nothing. I got absolutely nothing. Hold on. Who's that? It's hot in here. I could open my window. I can't open the whole thing. I don't have a screen. No, I actually have no idea, so we're just gonna throw this one to the wolves uh, and go with Satori and Patchouli. That's obviously wrong, because they've met before, but, but I, I, have, I don't know, I, I can't think of anything, and we gotta move on. Utsu and Kaguya. You know, I was thinking Kaguya, but I couldn't think of any power that Kaguya would want. Why would Kaguya want Utsu's power? Wait, no, the... Utsu would want Kaguya's power. Why would Utsu want Kaguya's power? What is Kaguya's power? Barely goes outside is correct for Kaguya. She does sneak out with Moko. We know that now, but... That, that ensures the barely. Hmm. Next one. This was also six minutes long. God damn it. Give me the next one, idiot. Judas Kiss? That's not as good as Forbidden Magic. No. Xylophones. I can do xylophones. They'd probably hang out considering second favorite character's master is at the same place. What? They'd probably hang out considering the second favorite character's master is at the same place. Hmm.
I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Mailing in Sakuya? Mailing in Sakuya? I don't fucking know. Marasa and Nazarin. Put some quotations on that master bit there, yeah. <laughs> Show is not Nazarene's master. Nazarene was sent down by Vishamotin to keep watch over a show. For some reason, they, they seem to have... People like to portray a master-servant relationship to them. And technically, I guess, since Show is an avatar of Vishamotin... Yeah, there's a technicality there, but for the most part, no. It's not, it's not like, it's not like the other characters, like Sakuya and Yomu and whatnot. But, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. Ma. Wait, what? Oh, whoops. Wait. I didn't. I. Okay. I was like, what the hell happened there? My second favorite character would probably be going around being like, yo, we're gonna start killing everyone you down. And they'd be like, yeah, sounds good. And they'd be like, 20th person they pick up. My favorite character would see some overlap in their yokai nature in terms of lowly things. My favorite character would probably be offended at that, but still go with second master. Oh, what the fuck happened? I, <laughs> I like, I like destroyed the half of the, the, I, I, I chunked the middle of the last prompt and put that one in the middle of it. And it got weird. Hmm. My second favorite character would probably be going around like we're gonna start killing everyone, and they'd be like, yeah, sounds good, and they'd be like the twentieth person they pick up. My second favorite character would see some overlap in their yokai nature in terms of lowly things. My favorite character would probably be offended at that, but still go with it. Yo, we're gonna start killing everyone, you down? Who the fuck is recruiting? Like, what is this shit? The yokai nature in terms of lowly things. Favorite character would probably be offended at that, that, but still go with it. Nature of lowly things. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Uh... They're just, they're just assembling a fucking a gang. Who has enough charisma to assemble a gang like that? I don't know, let's just go with Sage of Medicine. I don't know. Sage of Medicine, move on. Wriggle and Sage <laughs> Okay. Bum 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 bum. Wind God Girl, short version, five minutes and fifty seconds long. No. No, I hate those. That's good. Oh, it's already in there. My favorite character likes to play with her and on multiple occasions have engaged in schemes with her. They usually see each other at the Hakurei Shrine, however, at the first sign of trouble, will be sure to be the first one to bail. My favorite character cooked her 
for her a delicious stew once for her hard work. They usually see each other at the shrine, however, at the first sign of trouble, we'll be sure to be the first one to bail. <clears throat> Favorite character cooked her for her a delicious stew once for her hard work. I feel like this isn't Rainbow and Marissa. <clears throat> I feel like this isn't. I don't remember who's cooked stew before though. So let's go with uh, Marissa Remo. Star Marissa. Oh, was it? First time in trouble, the first to be the first one. Yeah, that sounds like Star. Favorite character cooked for her a delicious stew once. Did Star cook Marissa stew? When did that happen? I don't remember that. That happened in Lotus Eaters? Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Well. I didn't know the three fairies showed up in Lotus Eaters. Neat. remember that happening in Sengetsu say at all. I really don't. The character uh, description for Star matches, but the, the bit about the stew, I don't recall anything like that. In Sengetsu say anyway. Aww. They made stew during the Tsuchinoko and did they? I thought Marissa just took it right away to uh, to Reimu and then Reimu was like, yeah, you know that thing just eats, sleeps, and shits, right? And then it just disappeared. I don't recall any panel involving her making stew for her. Like, at all. Alright. I wonder what that was. Redacted one would probably defend Redacted two from being bullied by her airheaded, being bullied by her airheadedness. What? She could also pretend to be a hermit, as shown in Ten Desires, under Redacted one, even failing to do so. Hmm. Fairies were having a meal or something since they were stuck outside. Yeah, I just don't remember that. I don't remember that uh, panel like that at all. Redacted one would probably defend Redacted two from being bullied by her airheadedness, but she could also pretend to be a hermit, as shown in Ten Desires under Redacted one, even failing to do so. I feel like I'm not processing this sentence correctly. She could also pretend to be a hermit, as shown in Ten Desires, under Character one, even failing to do so. Who's getting bullied by their airheadedness? What does that mean? How, how do you get... Chat. Chat, how do you do that? How do you have a shrimp... Shrimp... Uh, fried brain moment, and then you, you bully yourself for it? Like, what? <laughs> it bullies you? I don't think that's how that works. That's not the right word. Bullied by my own shrimp fried brain. What the hell? Dude, I have no idea. But that's like, I feel like they're probably from Ten Desires because of the whole bit after that. Um. Let's. 
I don't know. Let's go with uh, let's go with Miko and Yoshka. I I don't know. I I can't tell if this is bad England or this is bad streamer. But I I feel like this is at very at the very least a majority of bad England. Kasen and Yomu. What? Oh my! Oh god! Now my head hurts. Yep, I remember Kasen's appearance in Ten Desires. I remember it well. Holy fuck, now my airheadedness is gonna bully me. Oh. Next. My favorite character would be really pleased to toy, manipulate, and do many interesting things with what remains of the people that mess up the garden of my second favorite character. Is <laughs> this Sega and Yuka? Is this Sega and Yuka? Yeah, it is Sega and Yuka. Orin likes collecting corpses that are whole. Sega would definitely collect body parts. Sega and Yuka. <laughs> Brutal. You know, Yoshika could always use some spare parts. Uh, my personal take on how these characters interact is by reading stories and books to each other. Since a book doesn't have a mind to predict the next... Hakurei Eastern Wind. Oh, this is the first stage theme of Tuhu. That is isn't all one, of course. What was I reading? My personal take on these characters interact is by reading stories and books to each other. Since a book doesn't have a mind to predict the next thing, uh, next thought, or things that will happen, one will finally have some genuine surprises while the other gets to enjoy one of the things they do most. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, Satori and Kogasa. I actually drew this scenario. Link removed, unless you want to see after guessing. Okay, but who are you? You're anonymous. But that is... That is, that is Satori and, uh, Kogasa. Anything involving surprises, dude. <laughs> and yeah, Satori- Patchily? Wait a minute. What? You know, uh... Patchy and Satori have interacted before. They've interacted before. Uh, it was in, um... It was in Cheating Detective. It was in Cheating Detective, and... Patchy gave Satori a very, very sassy remark. About how she relies too heavily on her mind reading that she has become incapable of making simple deductions and she says that with a big smile on her face and I was like damn but I have also seen uh, I've also seen a comic of these two getting along because they're both there's they have similar similar ideas to them but well that's a nice thought to have but Patchy's kind of an asshole See, I, I thought, I read genuine surprises as like, oh, it's Kogasa. Kogasa likes surprising people. And Patchy, Patchy's a prick. <laughs> she is 100% a sarcastic prick. And they have interacted before, and that was their only conversation in CBS. Get blown back. Get blown back! Alright. My favorite character probably wouldn't have any knowledge of my second favorite, but does know her sister fairly well. 
Well, there goes my brain. I'm gonna try that again. My favorite character probably wouldn't have any knowledge of my second favorite, but does hurt. One more time. My favorite character probably wouldn't have any knowledge of my second favorite, but does know her sister fairly well, since she lives in the same place as my favorite. If my second favorite were to come by, my favorite might get a sore throat or something similar. What? My favorite character probably wouldn't have any knowledge of my second favorite, but does know her sister fairly well, since she lives in the same place as my favorite. If my second favorite were to come by... My favorite might get a sore throat or something similar. What? My favorite character probably wouldn't have any knowledge of my second favorite, but does know her sister fairly well since she lives in the same place as my favorite. In the same place. Does... Uh, how, what is the place? Are you talking about the house or are you talking about the general area? If my second favorite were to come by, my favorite might get a sore throat or something similar. Why would you get a sore throat? What does that even mean? I don't know, let's go with Yugi and Koishi. Let's go with Yugi and Koishi. I can't tell if place refers to the house or the general area, so I'm using former hell. Kyoko and she, she. Kyoko and Shion. What? What does Shion have to do with that? No, Shion. Shion's bet. Xion's bad luck is re like directly related to money. Hina's bad luck is the bad luck that's just like fucking curse roulette. But Xion's Xion's whole deal is that she's afflicted by her own like she can't she can't keep money, and because she can't keep money, she can't get anything because money is exchanged for goods and services. She never has it. Her ability makes others lose money. That's her misfortune that she spreads. Like, you just lose it. That's the, that's the problem. Jun makes you lose it by spending it egregiously, and then Xion just makes you lose it through a series of unfortunate events. I don't know if Jun even lives at the, the temple either. Oh, jeez, Tay! Xion's bad luck was enough to make everyone lose the battle against her sister. Yeah, that's true. I suppose that's true. That did in fact happen. I don't know. I guess at that point we're just arguing semantics. All of her abilities are rooted in loss. Not that loss. My favorite character would probably get along with my second favorite since both of them are rather friendly and outgoing. They'd probably compete against each other while in drinking and eating contests. One would win with eating, the other would win with drinking. They'd be BFFs for sure. Friendly and outgoing, they'd probably compete against each other in drinking and eating contests. One would win with eating, the other would win with drinking. They'd be BFS for sure. I hope... I hope this is... the answer to this is good, because... <laughs> this is a happy one. I like this one. Both of them are rather friendly and outgoing. They'd probably compete against each other in drinking and eating, and with... Uh, an eating contest, one would win the eating, the other would win the drinking. Alright chat, I am going with, I'm going with Ruma and Suika. That's my answer. I wouldn't call Yuma friendly or outgoing, personally. But there's, I don't know. Oh, it's Yuko. See, see, Yuko is friendly and outgoing, to an extent. 
But when I think of friendly and outgoing, I think of, uh... I think of Ruma and her, her shrimp fried brain. You know, when she just runs around with her arms out and a smile on her face. That's, that's Ruma. But Suika and Yiko, I don't know if they've ever, like, really interacted. I wonder how they get along. I wonder how they get along, I do. Only number two is correct. You know, it's kind of wild how many more number two corrects I have, right? Versus number one corrects. Spaghetti. Next. My favorite character would tease and annoy my second favorite character and would probably tease her with stupid requests for tea and if going with snarky comments of her boss, however, not even her... Not even her is stupid enough to make jokes about her chest. <laughs> okay. Stupid requests for tea and her going with snarky comments of her boss. However, even she wouldn't be stupid enough to make jokes about her chest. I'm going with Seija and Sakuya. Seija and Sakuya. Could be Tay. Yukari and Sakuya. See, sometimes, sometimes there's too many, there's, there's too many open ends for these answers. Sakuya was a day bringer because of the chess joke. But character messing with her, that could be fucking anyone, dude. That could be anyone. Alright. My favorite character would brush her off as an annoyance and ask her to leave at once if they are interrupting my favorite character's work. Or annoying someone pretty important to them, otherwise they wouldn't interact they would interact normally in parties and such. My favorite character would also refuse if they were asked a certain something by my second favorite, as would most other characters. her off as an annoyance, ask her to leave at once if they are interrupted my favorite character's work or annoying someone pretty important to them otherwise they would interact normally in parties and such. Favorite character would also refuse if they were asked a certain something by my second favorite as would most other characters. Would refuse what? What would they refuse? What, what are you asking them? What are you asking them? I don't know! What are you refusing? They interact normally at parties and such, but... Tell her to fuck off if she was interrupting her work. Or annoying someone important to them. They would refuse if they were asked a certain something. Dude, is this mailing in Tenshi? I'm going. I'm going with that, and I am acting under the assumption that a Tenshi is asking mailing to hit her. That's that's what I have chosen to think. Sakuya and Aya. Okay, what the fuck is a certain something in this situation? An interview? I was thinking Tenchi asking people to hit her. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Maybe I'm the wrong party here. Why is it phrased like that? A certain something. Why didn't you just say interviews? Why did you have to make it fucking mysterious like that? Like it's dirty, like it's illicit. Like I can't say it on stream. All you did was make the chat eyebrow. Nobody eyebrowed, but they were thinking it. I know they were, I know how they are. 
My favorite character would have an argument with my other favorite. Who's the other favorite? You mean the second favorite? About how science is more valuable and powerful and fun than magic. Although her disputer would make an argument about how both magic and science are essentially the same thing. That's for Kako and you, Mamie. I smell food. Well, it could also be Notori, I suppose. Rikako and Patchouli. Chad, has Patchy ever said that before? Has Patchy ever compared magic to science? Genuinely asking, I don't recall anything like that. I know that Rikako, uh, her whole shtick is that she, uh, like, in Gensokyo, science is, like, blasphemy kind of deal. With how magic in the outside world, people view science in Gensokyo as uh, the outside world views magic. So I knew that one. Oh, she did build a rocket. Yeah, that's true. I came up with the rocket building. That would make the most sense, now that I think about it. She, cause she builds a, she builds a rocket made of, uh, she literally builds a rocket and it's, but it's like, it's power source is magic. So I guess, I don't know. I guess so. It's been a while since I read Silent Center in Blue chat. Silent Center in Blue is a very... It's a hard reread. It's it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's 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 a hard reread. Let's uh let's leave it at that. There's a lot of things about that one. Okay. All right. She, first fave, was shocked to have found that she was familiar with their second fave's area of residence in a way that not even she. Who is capable of obtaining deep knowledge from anybody in a way only she can had known. The fuck did I just read? It was my own fault. <laughs> First, favorite character was shocked to have found that she was familiar with her area of residence in a way that's not even she, who is capable of obtaining deep knowledge from anybody in a way only she can had known. Hmm? She was shocked to have found that she was familiar with their area of residence in a way that not even she who is capable of obtaining deep knowledge from anybody any, in the way only she can had known. So she was familiar with their area of residence in a way that not even she had known. Wait, what? How does that, what does that mean? She was shocked to have found that she was familiar with their area of residence. That makes sense. But then what happens here? In a way that not even she who is capable of obtaining deep knowledge from anybody in the only in a way only she can had known. What does that mean? What does that mean? She was shocked to find out that she was familiar with their area of residence in a way that is not related to her ability? Like I I'm having trouble processing the sentence. I don't get it. Hmm. Oh, I need to get rid of this music. That's a good one. Fucking trim fried on that. Chat, I don't know how to read this sentence at all. I, I don't... I don't know how to read the second half of this sentence. I can't process it. Obtaining deep knowledge from anybody in a way only she can. There's like... There's a few characters like that. Uh... I don't know, let's go with Satori and Kasen. I have no fucking idea. I can't... I don't understand this sentence. So, just get me out of here. Mind reading is one thing. I was thinking Doremi's ability to see dream people, but also as we saw an antinomy of common flowers. Dream people. Uh, dream people can be
be seen by others if they escape the dream world. So it's not necessarily a way that only Dora and me could come and access to that information. But the answer is Dora and me and Iku anyway. Alright, never mind. Uh, forget what I just said, because apparently that's wrong. Or whatever. Iku. She was shocked to have found that she was familiar with their area of residence in a way that not even she who is capable of- What does that mean?! I don't understand what the fuck that means! Streamer, calm down. It's just a few words on the notepad. Don't take it too seriously. Let it go. Let it go. Relax your brain muscles. Pay no attention to it. Alright, next one. I'd imagine the two of them would get along really well. They're both huge dorks with insatiable curiosity and outgoing personalities. My second favorite character would probably want to help educate my first favorite character. Considering my second favorite knows what it's like to be young and inexperienced. I feel like a lot of people would know what it's like to be young and inexperienced. They also probably get into their own bunch of shenanigans, since my first favorite is recklessness and ego. Combined with my second favorite's ten tendency to get carried away in their own excitement makes a bit of a recipe for disaster, but in a fun way. Hmm. I'd like- I'd imagine two of them get along, they're both huge dorks, sensational curiosity, and outgoing personalities. Second favorite character would probably want to help educate my first favorite, considering my second favorite knows what it's like to be. Probably in their own bunch of things against the person's recklessness and ego, combined with my second favorite's tendency to get carried away in their own excitement, makes for a bit of a recipe for disaster, but in a fun way. I don't know. Let's go with Sanai and Sumireko. But I'm curious as the answer to this one. I'm curious to the answer to this one for sure. It is okay. It is. It is. It is, it is Sumireko and Sanai. All right. Sanai is still young though. She doesn't age. The PS2 is still new. more. My favorite character would probably first interact with them by inadvertently antagonizing them through the side effects of an ambitious yet not fully thought out scheme, after which she would go del deliver the antagonize my favorite character right back. After the immediate conflict is resolved, my favorite character would then probably try to form a mutually beneficial relationship with them, which would likely be too busy relaxing, which they would likely be too really busy relaxing to commit to. Probably first interact with them by inadvertently antagonizing them to the side effects of an ambitious yet not fully thought out scheme through which they would go and deliberately antagonize my favorite character right back. After the immediate conflict, my favorite character would probably try to form a mutually better- I can't think while you're in my ear, Daze. Christ. Alright. A mutually beneficial relationship with them which they would likely be too busy to relaxing to commit to. Hmm. Chat, I'm gonna go with Shimmy, Shimmy and Suika. Shimmy and Suika. I don't really know. Kanako and Yuka. Oh, yeah, that's my brain. Yeah, there it goes, down my ear. <laughs> there it goes. I didn't need that. 
A little less gray matter. Never hurt anyone. Alright. Next. Favorite character would most likely be left behind if in a group with my second favorite character. My favorite character's off in the butt end of the joke. My favorite character thinks they are the smartest and most powerful fairy. Most likely to be left behind if in a group with my second favorite. My favorite character is off in the butt end of the jokes. That's probably just Cherno and Die, right? I mean, Die is the one character in that group of friends who sometimes just isn't included because she isn't. And then obviously that's Chirbo. So let's go with that. Chirbo Die. El Clasico. Marissa. Oh, whoops, I read the sentence wrong. Okay. I made a mistake there. I read the I read the first sentence wrong. Whoops. Oh, that's fine. I reread it in my head. Die doesn't even make sense in the context of uh of the writing. So that was my bad. That was my bad. Oopsie daisy. All right. Next one. My favorite character would probably know of them even though they never met just because of the amount of trouble they've caused. If both of them ended up meeting, my favorite character would have a difficult time talking to them just based off what they've been through, their mindset and way of speaking, and wouldn't try to dwell any further while continuing to focus on their job. probably know of them even though they've never met just because of the amount of trouble they've caused. If both of them ended up meeting, my favorite character would have a difficult time talking to them just based off what they've been through. Their mindset and way of speaking and wouldn't try to dwell. Oh, is this, this is, this is Aki and Seija, right? Yes, hello? Can I help you? Yes? I think this is a, a Dora me and Seija. I wonder what Sage's dream form would be like. Do you think it's like meek and innocent? The dream forms are less so, they're less opposites to characters and more exaggerated, exaggerated sides to them that the characters bottle up. So I wonder, I wonder what dream Sage is like. I wonder what she's like. I like dream Jun. That's my favorite dream version. Hmm. My favorite character would think she made a new friend, but she's probably not sharp enough to realize she's just being used to do something both her and my second favorite character tried before and failed. My favorite character would think she made a new friend, but she's probably not sharp enough to realize she's just being used to do something both her and my second favorite my second character tried before and failed. What? Oh no, England strikes again, dude. Uh, Shimmy and Seija, I guess. I don't know, the way this reads, it's like, favorite character makes new friend. I don't fucking know. Utsu and Seija. Oh, okay. I, I'm not reading this correctly. My favorite character, so let's try, okay. Utsu would think she made a new friend, but she's probably not sure enough to realize she's being used to do something both her and Seija tried before and failed. Okay, I think what this is saying is both Utsu and Seija, like, at one time... Oh. Like, I think this is trying to say that, say, like, both of them had tried to 
But what? What? Sage doesn't want to. Sage doesn't want to necessarily destroy Gensokyo, right? She wants to she wants to flip the hierarchy of power. Overturn Gensokyo. Utsuo wanted to turn that shit into hell. They committed incident. Uh, I don't really think it's the same degree though. There's a difference between a societal uprising and fucking turning the entirety of Gensokyo into new hell. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <clears throat> Unless you're saying Sage tried to turn the entire world to hell, which I mean, I guess if you want to, if you want to, you want to split hairs about it, you could argue that it is exactly what she tried to do. Hmm. Next. New sound. <laughs> Number one would be put off by number two's intense loyalty to another, as number one is quite the lone wolf. However, they may bond over being humans who both have unconventional states of being. In, in their only mainline game interaction, number two is frightened by number one's effects on her master's power. Hmm. Number one would be put off by number two's intense loyalty, as number one... It's quite the lone wolf. The bond between humans being unconventional states of being. Their only mainline game interaction, number two is frightened by number one's effect. Oh, this is Moko and Yomu, right? This is Moko and Yomu? Because humans, uh, unconventional states of being, half ghost, half uh, an immortal, and effect on master's power, Yuiko cannot kill. Uh, cannot kill Moko. Moko would never be able to die. She would always r uh, resurrect. I was thinking Sakuya at first, but no, the bit at the end there. The bit at the end about the afflicting the mat, like the master, relating it back to the master in a way. And of course, the the state of being is important too, because there's only so many humans against Tokyo, and there's only the only ones I could think of that have an unnatural state of being is the one that's half ghost and the one that is an immortal. Sakuya, Marissa, and Reimu, you know, they're all, they have their powers and abilities and whatnot, but they're still just humans. Next one. While envious of many things, my favorite character is particularly envious of their healthy work ethic and number of ears. This is Parsi and Oren. <laughs> Parsi's jealous of everything, and Oren has four ears, because she does. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why Oren has four ears, but she does. It's kind of weird. Hmm. Alright. It'd probably be sort of kindred spirits, despite never interacting in canon. First one has a house that I think the second favorite would find fascinating, and possibly want to crash slash hang out there. Unfortunately, the second favorite wouldn't find any actual food for herself there, so she'd probably not stick around. I can see the second trying to conscript the first into providing background ambience while she works. I don't see the first favorite being terribly eager to go along with it in good faith. But she might do so anyway just to watch stupid antics as the second favorite screws up as usual. Main problem with the scenario though is that the favorite is sort of a busy celebrity and the second favorite is a nobody. So it's a little far-fetched to see them interacting with each other. First one has a house that I think the second favorite would find fascinating and there would be no food there. She'd probably not stick around. That's Reimu. I can see the second trying to conscript the first and refining background ambience while she works. I don't see the first favorite being terribly eager to go along with it in good faith. But she might do so anyway just to watch stupid antics as the second favorite screws up as usual. Main problem with the scenario is that my favorite is sort of a busy celebrity. And the second favorite is a nobody. A nobody, huh? A nobody. Screws up as usual. A 
There's no food for herself there, so she wouldn't stick around. You know what's funny? The, the answer to this, the second character, is gonna make somebody upset. How dare you call them a nobody? Screws up as usual, though. Hmm. You know, I don't really know. Let's go with... Let's go with... I think it's... It's probably not Reimu. But let's go with Reimu. Let's go with Rainbow and uh... go with Rainbow and Diose. I have no fucking idea though. Rainbow and Diose. Lyrica and Kogasa. Kogasa is a nobody. Favorite is a sort of busy... Oh, wait, no. It's all... It's all coming together. Wait a minute. It's all coming together. Okay. So the food bit is how Kogasa... Kogasa thrives off scaring people, but she can't scare the poltergeist. So there's nothing there for her. I was thinking Reimu because she has no fucking anything. Second try to conscript the first in providing background ambience while she works, aka playing music for her while she does her smithing. Fit. Well, no, not it's not related to that. It's related to her trying to scare someone. Being terribly eager to go. So you're telling <laughs> she would ask Lyrica to provide like fucking background music, like in those shitty horror films when Kogasa jumps out, Lyrica just hits the keyboard like da da. <laughs> Uh, she might just do so anyway to watch stupid antics is my second favorite screws up. See, calling her a nobody, calling her a nobody I guess makes sense, but at the same time it's like, I don't consider Kogasa a nobody. She's well known in the village. She's very well known in the village. She's quite popular. Whereas the Prism Rivers, I, I guess you could call them busy celebrities, but... Uncle Goss is definitely not a nobody. When I think nobody, I think of like characters who don't do anything. They just, they just exist. They just kind of exist. Like, Letty's a nobody. Letty showed up and then just disappears. Nobody knows who she is. She's not important. Well, Kogasa exists in Gensokyo all the time, and she does a lot of different things, and the humans in the human village all know her. So she's she's actually a bit of a celebrity herself in that regard. Streamer tried. Streamer tried. Streamer cried. Alright. fuck is this fast and furious ass conversation my favorite driving 150 miles per hour we used to be a happy family i loved her bro she took the kid second fan it says nothing we used to be a happy family i loved her she took the kid second fan says nothing
she took the kid. She took the kid. Who the fuck is this? Who is this? The singular kid. Who's the kid who got taken? What? Why is she driving 150 miles per hour? Is that even relevant? I don't fucking know what this is, dude. Just give me the answer and move on. Just give me the answer, I'm moving on. Yoki and Unzon. Alright, next one. This might be a difficult one and likely not the first or last of its kind. Well, there's like 10 left, so it probably is. But both my favorite characters never met canonically as far as I know, and it would require both, uh, my favorite character to actually leave the area where they live and my second favorite character doesn't have a reason to visit said area unless, of course, an incident demanded it and my second favorite needed certain information to help their friends. It would like to be a scary endeavor, though. If they ever meet in normal circumstances, say in a shrine party, I can imagine them hitting it off with each other, but they likely wouldn't talk much as one is a bit silent and the other is a bit cynical. I could also imagine that my first favorite character would question my second favorite character what they know about the Miracle Mallet. Additionally, I feel that if my second favorite character helped my first favorite in their work, their power would be more very useful in regards to finding things they ever got the hang of traversing the work area, but I fear said things that would have bite marks on the covers if they were ever required to carry these things around. So, uh... Hitting it off, they like to talk much. One's a bit silent, the other is a bit cynical. Imagine that my first favorite character would question my second favorite, what they know about the miracle mallet. Hmm. Second favorite character helped my first favorite in their work, their power would be very useful. If my second favorite helped my first favorite in their work. Their power would be very useful in regards to finding things if they ever got the hang of traversing the work area, but I fear said things would have bite marks on the covers if it were required to carry these things around. Bite marks?
Wow, that's too much information. <clears throat> Chat, I don't know. Bite marks, miracle mallet, locations. I have no idea. I have there's 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 so much text. I don't know. I have no idea. It's been two and a half hours. Ah, oh, fuck me. Well, I think one of them is Nazarin, but I just I don't know. So I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna go with Nazarin and Shimmy. Because I feel like Shimmy is a given because the Miracle Mallet, but I also feel like Nazarin is involved here. But then I can't find the common link between the top sections. Let's go with that. Patchy and Seki Bonky. Bite marks. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. Oh. Because if Seki Bonky went and got books off the shelves, she would send her heads and they would have to. She would have to grip them in her mouth to carry them down. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. I get ya. Now I get it. And she would ask Patchy about the Miracle Mallet because she was afflicted by it during the events and Patchy's very knowledgeable. Ha ha, ha it's in her name. And she wouldn't visit the SDM unless she had to. Uh, needed certain information to help their friends, aka she's part of the grassroots Yokai network so she wants it, gets information like that. It'd be scary to go there because it's the Devil's Mansion. There's a lot here, okay. It, the, now that I have the answer, unpacking it's a lot easier and it makes a lot of sense. Okay, alright. I get ya, I get ya, I get ya. I was on the wrong track with bite marks, but that was a clever use, uh, clever descriptor for that. I didn't think of that at all. I was thinking of Nazarin and bunt the little, little, you know, little rodents. Alright, uh... <laughs> I like, that's like a good visual image though. Sekibaki getting books down from the shelf by throwing a head up there and then just having to fight on the like the, the spine of the book. Alright. My favorite character at a glance would be surprised by the upfront nature of how she acts, always cutting her sentences off, and it would be odd because they never have met before. However, she would be curious on how to provoke the same reaction on other people and would want to be teached by her. However, that would be an impossible request. That's Satori and Kaguya, yeah? Satori is known for cutting people's sentences off, and of course, Kogasa and Satori. Oh. Oh, uh, I read... Damn it. I read too much in the last line. But yeah, Satori is definitely known for cutting people off. However, she uh, should be curious how to provoke the same reaction to other people and would want to be teached by her. That would be an impossible request. Because it's it's a, the reaction that Kogasa's feeling is a reaction of surprise. You know, she's surprised that, uh, that Satori is able to cut her off with what she's thinking. So Kogasa wants to do that to others. That makes sense. I read impossible request and I was like, oh, it's gotta be Kaguya, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't pick that word choice. Alright. My character wouldn't be able to outrun them, but very knowledgeable about their weakness. 
She notes how powerful creatures tend to have odd weaknesses, so she'll plan this trick when both of them are on a race tomorrow. Powerful creatures tend to have odd weaknesses, so she'll plan this trick when both of them are in a race tomorrow. Uh, let's go with Marissa Aya. Marissa Aya. I'm not really sure. This feels specific, but I don't know. I don't know. It could be, you know, people. Patchy and Suika. The character wouldn't be able to outrun them, but very knowledgeable with their weakness. She notes how powerful creatures tend to have odd weaknesses, so she'll plan this trick with both of them around a race tomorrow. Patchy? Racing? Patchy racing. I mean, if she made a car, then she'd probably race, but she ain't running a foot race. My favorite character would not recognize them, would probably challenge them to a fight, and would very likely go Pachoon. Now, you can't chat. You can't honestly expect me to just be able to know exactly which two characters this is this is referring to. Like, there's no way that you can expect me to get this right without any other information. And then be like, oh, I guess Streamer is bad, he's got so many wrong answers. Yeah, you're right. I do have a bunch of wrong answers because I get prompts like this. I get prompts like this that have no information to go off of. My favorite character would not recognize them, would probably challenge them to a fight, and would very likely go Pachoon. Seija Yuka. Seija Yuka. Didn't you run into Yuka in 9? The answer is Cherno and Genji. So like... So like, you see, right? You see how this is definitely my fault that I didn't get that right? We got left. <sighs> Four more, okay. My favorite character might not ever even speak with my second favorite, considering the latter does not drink alcohol. However, were they to fight each other, the entire world would be in danger, and at least one of them would be destroyed. Bum 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 Yuka Biakridin Yuka Biakridin Sonai Suika and Flandre Flandre doesn't drink Biakridin doesn't drink She's also a, a vegetarian. How do we know that Flannery doesn't drink alcohol? She quit the strong stuff. Based on what? What? There's no information on that. Sonai doesn't like drinking. There's a whole chapter on that for dealing with Rainbow's peer pressure. Streamer, you're wrong again. Like, you're wrong again, streamer. Shape up. Alright. <laughs> Her basement is just one giant AA meeting. She's down there because of one... 
She's down there because of one especially bad night with a... Uh, what's that shit? Strong sun. <laughs> Ever since the, that was the vampire incident, Flan gets her hands on some strong sun. And the spell card rules were created and Flan was sent away down to the, the brig. <laughs> yes, yes, good lord, yes. Alright. A city of the strong zero. My favorite- oh, okay. A major decision my favorite character has made- has made now often begets my second favorite character's worry. Nevertheless, they do enjoy each other's company and the manner in which they interact can generally be described as the goofball and the straight man, respectively. Hmm. A major decision my favorite character has made now often begets my second favorite character's worry. Nevertheless, they do enjoy each other's company and the manner in which they interact can generally be described as the goofball and the straight man, respectively. Major decision. Characters who have made a major decision in their life. Hmm. See, I think this is just Marissa and Alice, but maybe I'm missing something. Alice is often like the straight man to uh, to Marissa, but then there's also times where Alice is, um, you know. Alice. But Alice is the only one I can think of who's made a major decision on her life. And that would be becoming a yokai magician. I don't know. Yiko made- yeah, Yiko did. Yiko made a pretty uh, heavy decision, yeah, that's true. But I wouldn't consider them goofball and straight man. With, uh, Yiko and, y and Yukari. So I'm still waiting for the answer. Koishi and Satori. Oh yeah, that is a major decision. Yeah, Koishi closing her eye like that. Goofball and straight man. Yeah, no, that that checks out. I didn't think far enough ahead for those two. I stopped at Alice and Marissa and I couldn't think of anything else there. And I didn't I didn't bother to think any harder than that. But Satori and Koishi works. Alright. Next one. They would lecture them on what they shouldn't mess about with their pa- mess up- what? Mess- Shouldn't mess about with their- shouldn't- They would lecture them on- on what they shouldn't mess about with their powers. What the- I'm dead. That's me. I'm Kirby. Falling down the pit right now. They would lecture them on what they shouldn't mess about with their powers. I don't know, Cass and Clown Piece. Cass and Clown Piece. Aki and Saki. Seki was the written answer. What? You sure it's Saki? Peaceful. They would lecture on what they shouldn't mess up with their powers. What? Ooh. 
with their powers, not raw power. Powers being plural, their abilities. What? One more, chat. One more. One more. One more. There's one fucking more. This is the last one. I hope to God it's not bad. My second favorite character would immediately attack my favorite with immense firepower, but would be then be told off for being reckless. My favorite would then tell the other to improve their lack of patience, and then the two would most likely have a nice chat about their lives and roles in Gensokyo. Immediately attack with immense firepower, and then be told off for being reckless. Here, then tell the other to improve their lack of patience, and the two would most likely have a nice chat about their lives and roles in Gensokyo. I'm going with Kasenenoku. Kasenenoku. That's my final answer. Now get me the fuck out of here. Play me out, Johnny. Aki and Utsuho. Ah. See, that's the second time I said Kasen when it was Aki. Damn it. Alright, chat. And that's it. I'm done. There's no more. There's no more. It's gone. 10,000 sized Jun. 10,000. Crazy stuff. <laughs> okay. Alright. Where do I click to get the face? No, that's it, chat. That's it. It's over. Um, yeah. So, that was... That was a lot. <laughs> hmm. That was a lot. God damn. So, yeah. Let's count them real quick before anything else. Before we officially end this nightmare. Burp. Oh, no. What is this? Alright. Ready? Count. There's ten rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine... Nine rows. Eighty-nine correct guesses. Only the first guess correct. Uh, wait, did I? Hold on. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. Okay, yeah, it was 89. This is 35. 35 number one onlys. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventy number two is correct. And wrongs. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, one hundred. Oh shit. One hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty, one hundred and twenty seven. 127 incorrect guesses. Now, if we were to scratch out all of the... If we were to scratch out all of the entries that did, just didn't have enough information, or were just not good, then it would look something more like, uh... More like, more like this, I think. You know. More like that, I think it would. It would look like, you know. But that's just me. There's no way, there's no way to be sure about that. But, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I was, there was definitely a lot of them that I was wrong about. And there were some of them that I'm pretty sure people didn't submit their favorite characters. They just submitted something that they thought would be funny. And, uh, well, results may vary, I suppose. Some of them were great. 
and others were not. But it is what it is. But I had fun with this. This was fun. It, w it went on for way too fucking long. Because it was five parts. Way too many entries. Absolutely way too many entries. That was... Oops. I didn't expect that. I really didn't. But I'm glad I, you know, people were interested enough to submit. Uh, will I do something like this in the future? Maybe. Maybe I'll do something like this again. But... I am... Tired. I am tired. Fuck. That's like a month straight. That's a month straight of this on weekends. Holy Jesus, the high pitch on this guitar. But no, I had fun. So of course, chat, thank you for watching. Thank you for submitting. Thank you to my mods for actually, like, you know, giving me the answers so I could do it this way. Because the thing is, the biggest issue that came from this is one, because it was anonymous, I couldn't get the answers. Like, I made it anonymous so I wouldn't get any hints by the submitter- uh, the submitters. But then I also needed a way to verify the answers. But if I had that on the same sheet, I couldn't, like, read the submissions. So I needed to find a way that so I could read the, the prompts, but not get the answers. And this was the result. So, it is a little scuffed, a process, but it worked. It did work, and I'm glad it worked. Also, they were able to go through and, you know, get rid of some of the, some of the real funny, the real funny answers. The real funny answers. Ah, classic funny answers. But I didn't look at the sheet, so to be honest with you, I don't actually give a flying fuck about what was removed. Because as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't on the sheet to begin with, if I didn't see it. So, that's fine. There was- I left it to their discretion, and they took care of it, so... This is the result. You didn't miss anything bad. Or, you didn't miss anything worth, uh, seeing, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. But yeah, chat, that's it! Ugh. That's it, chat. This was fun. Now it is time to play me out on a live Jun reaction. I'll save the results just in case. But yeah, you know, uh, when I put the bot up, when I, yeah, when I put the bot up, we can probably talk about it another time, but there will, there have been people who have been tracking the results, so you'll probably see that in the comment section. I'll find it some time to bring it up as well on the stream, for sure. Just kind of to, o like, overlook, like, look over the results and kind of see where it went. Of course, some answers will be a bit skewed. Some, some things will be a bit skewed because, like I said, some, I'm 99% sure some people submitted with not the intention of their favorite characters, but just to, like, you know, just, just to put something that would trip up Streamer Man. That's all. But for the most part, I think we'll see a pretty interesting, like, graph of information. I wonder who takes the cake. There was a lot of Kogasa. There was a... Oh. There was a there was a lot of Kogasa. All right, is this it? Has is this updated? Like, is this accurate to this stream, or is this uh, or is this only from last stream? Like, is this uh, is this is this this is updated to this stream? All right, we can look at it right now then. All right, chat, peep this. This is the results. So, number one was Moko. First and second place combined, which means Moko appeared 24 times over the course of this. Moko appeared 24 times. Kogasa and Koishi tied at 22. And Yomu, Yukari, and Yiko tied at 21 for third. That was top three. Wow. Twenty-four mocos. That's not because of me, right? That's surely that's not because of me. Like, you know, I know Moko's my icon and whatnot, and yet Moko used to be my favorite. <laughs> Moko used to be my favorite, but 
Hmm. Well, uh, that's interesting. I know Mako's popular, but that much popular? That, like, that much more popular than Kogasa, Koishi, Yomu, Yukari, and Yiko. Followed by Marissa at 18, Aya and Reimu and Satori at 16, Sakuya, Yuka, Utsu, Mistia, Alice, Chirno, Eiki, Flandre, Meiling, Reisen, Remilia, Tenshi, Kokoro, Pachuli, Hina, Sanai, Suika, Byakuden, Kusen, Nitori, Doremi, Futo, Junko, Rumia, Seija, Sekibanki, Shimi, Sumireko, Tei, Clown, Jun, Kaguya, Kane, Luna, Miko, Rin, Rinosuke, Shion, Yugi, Keiki, Kozusu, Medicine, Minoriko, Ron, Sagume, Tsukasa, Riggle, Yuma, On, Chen, Hitate, Hikatia, Kanako, Kutaka, Mamizo, Mayumi, Mima, Okina, Parsi, Suwako, Yumemi, Shimada, Iku, Kwakama, Komachi, Kyoko, Letty, Lyrica, Momiji, Murasa, Nazarin, Raiko, Sega, Shinki, Sho, Star, Sunny, Luna got more by two. Hagane, Wagasaki, Yashie, Yorihime. Yorihime was on there twice. <laughs> Fuck off. Yoshika, Yumiko, Chiyuri, Dayose, Genji, Ichiden, Kagero, Kana, Kotohime, Lily White, Unasa, Merlin, Michael, Mir Mirabel, Miyoi, Momoyo, Narami, Nue, Reisen 2, Rika, Rikako, Saki, Seiden, Shizuha, Toyohime, and Yamame. Okay. Okay. All right, but that's their com that's their combined chat. That's the combined total. So we don't know. I don't know how many of those mocos were number one and how many of them were number two. But that's the combined appearance rate. That is the combined appearance rate. Hmm. Nah, no, it's fine. We'll leave it at that because it's been three hours anyway. But there you go, chat. There you go. Hope you enjoyed. These statistics mean not much. They don't mean too much, but they're interesting to see. Moko being that high is quite interesting. That's fine. Whether you choose to conclude your own or not, it's up to you. It's up to you. Mima was in there three times. A lot of Moko. A lot of Moko. No, we're gonna... I'm gonna wrap this up. This has been going on. This has been going on. This has been going on too long. It's time to end this. It's time to end this. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh... Maybe someday I'll do something like this again, differently. But, not for a little bit, at least. Not until I think of something that's really worth submitting to. That's all. So, yeah. Farewell!